Hundreds of millions of years ago, back when dinosaurs still roamed the earth, the oceans had no currents. Due to its extremely stagnant water, plant and animal life was able to build up on the ocean floor. When enough dead life was built up, matter at the bottom of the pile began to heat up and form the gooey, black, sickly substance that our entire lives are built on. And this is the history of oil. <laughs> You could say China was ahead of the game. Archaeologists have found evidence of surface mining and household uses of coal in China dating back to 3490 BC. The first practical use of natural gas also dates back to China in 200 BC when they used it to fire evaporators to make salt. Let's jump to the Middle Ages. People didn't really use coal because of the soot and smoke, but it had started to be used to supply forges, smithies, and breweries. The use of coal in iron and steel production helped to pave the way for the Industrial Revolution. By the mid-1700s, yeah, we, we waited a, a little while there, oil had begun to be extracted by skimming oil from springs and creeks. With increased demand, however, miners had to begin to dig beneath the Earth's surface. In 1851, Samuel Keir marketed carbon oil for use in lamps, which was slightly more sensible than selling it as drinking medicine. Though not seemingly significant, this is one of the earliest found uses for oil, which would continue to become integral to people's lifestyles. Finally, the beginning of the modern petroleum industry began in 1859 when Edwin Drake decided to drill 69 and a half feet down into the good old Pennsylvanian soil to get that sweet, sweet oil. It was a huge success! Except that the well caught on fire and got destroyed less than two months later. In 1861, the first ever shipload of petroleum crossed the Atlantic Ocean, traveling from Philadelphia all the way to London. All was good and well. The Americans were happy, the British was happy, everyone was happy because of this newfound oil. However, the plants and animals weren't too stoked. And so, Pennsylvania legislator passed the first anti-pollution bill in 1863 to prevent the running of tar and distillery refuse into creeks. In 1863, the Standard Oil Trust was formed with the aim to become the largest refinery firm in the world. It was later renamed to the Standard Oil Company in 1870. By 1878, Standard Oil controlled 90% of the domestic refining capacity. The company ended when it dissolved into 37 independent organizations by the government because of monopolistic practices. In 1911, however, it also meant the beginning of multiple large companies such as Mobil, Chevron, and BP. It begins as we enter the 20th century. In 1901, the Texas oil boom began when oil was struck at Spindletop Field, although up to 850,000 barrels of oil was lost due to the huge amount of black gold that erupted from the Lucas Gusher. There was still enough to drive the huge growth of the industry. Within a year, more than 1,500 oil companies had been chartered and the oil became the dominant fuel of the century and an integral part of the American economy. But it wasn't just America that was having a good time. In 1907, oil was found in Iran by a British former gold miner and a Middle Eastern Shah. The discovery led to the incorporation of Anglo-Persian Oil Company. 1908 brought about the mass production of Ford Model T, which was the first affordable car. This meant that more people could buy cars to help further create a car-orientated culture and thus help to support the industry. Another pinnacle moment of oil history was the discovery of the Arabian Peninsula in 1932, which led to the discovery of oil in Saudi Arabia in 1938. This American-owned oil well in Durahan drilled into what would soon be identified as the largest source of petroleum in the world. This hugely impacted Saudi Arabia's physical, human, and political geography. Oil replaced tourism revenue as the main source of income. Today, oil accounts for more than 92% of the Saudi Arabian budget. Pushed them to establish relationships with many countries such as Japan, China, Southeast Asia and Western countries and help them to change the demographics of the kingdom due to millions of foreign workers living and working in. Of course, at the beginning of the 20th century wasn't completely amazing. While there were a couple of oil booms, there was of course the Great Depression. And the price of oil dropped to 10 cents a barrel. 
And there was two world wars. Although World War II wasn't fantastic, it helped to stimulate the oil industry. Research increased the number of products made from petroleum natural gas, such as TNT and artificial rubber, and helped upgrade petrol to improve airplane speed. It also meant that government started rationing petrol and controlling prices due to the large demand and limited amount produced. Securing oil became a top priority for both foreign and domestic policy. Now this all seems great, right? While fossil fuels have their benefits, they also have a massive negative impact on society. It is a relatively efficient energy source and it provided a boost to local economies who sold oil and other products. However, society gradually became more and more dependent on fossil fuels, becoming a part of people's lifestyles. As well as petrol, we now also have petrochemicals, which are used for a variety of different products. And that's the history of oil, up to about 1950 that is. And thanks to all these for helping us out. See you next time.